Hello Saints and future Saints by the absolute glory of our Lord hopefully the fullness of the Gentiles is increasing each and every day so we can go home now you know we've recently uh, finished our study series called hidden truth and today we begin a new study the seven dispensations of God now let me tell you the the information we'll be studying together is extremely important so important that I highly recommend new Christians learn this information first even before opening their Bibles and hopefully it's a King James Version Bible now understanding dispensations is absolutely critical it's the foundation to understanding God's Word the result of not having some knowledge about dispensations leads to confusion false doctrine and worse disbelief now we know Paul talked about dispensations in 2nd Timothy chapter 2 verse 15 study to show thyself uh, thyself approved unto God a workman that needeth not to be ashamed rightly dividing the word of truth Paul is emphasizing the importance of right division keeping God's word in context but what does it mean exactly to study dispensationally now on a most basic level it's reading a Bible passage and asking where do I fit within the group of people being spoken about here in this passage asking the who what where when how type of questions to discover the context of the Bible passage being read so asking yourself is this passage speaking to the body of Christ is it speaking to me or is it speaking to another group of people more often than not the mistake of assuming the entire Bible is written to us today is exactly the cause of all false teaching we see in the world the entire Bible is written for our learning but only part of the Bible is written to us today the body of Christ for today specifically Paul's books Romans through Philemon now an example of how God divides his word dispensationally is when God gave the law to the people of Israel through Moses in 1500 BC one of the laws was to do no work on the Sabbath the Sabbath lasts from sundown on Friday to sundown on Saturday now in that dispensation it was written in numbers uh, chapter 15 verses 32 to 36 and while the children of Israel were in in the wilderness they found a man that gathered sticks upon the Sabbath day and that they that found him gathering sticks brought him unto Moses and Aaron and unto all the congregation and they put him inward in ward because it was not declared what should be done with him to him and the Lord said unto Moses the man shall be surely put to death all the congregation shall stone him with stones without the camp and all the congregation brought him without the camp and stoned him with stones and he died as the Lord commanded Moses now we see God commanding the people to stone violators to death for disobeying the Sabbath law now does that mean if we see our neighbor mowing his grass on Saturday you know Saturday morning does that mean he's committing a sin no it should we round up the whole neighbor or the, 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 the entire neighborhood and pick up a bunch of stones and kill him of course not we realize that the children of Israel weren't Christians okay they weren't the body of Christ we're not under the law of Moses today like they were they lived in a different dispensation far from our dispensation you know we're in the dispensation of grace today now the word dispensation comes from the word dispense or dispensing or administration so a disp dispensation is an administration or dispensing of God's will over a certain period of time to a certain 
group of people. Now, in other words, a dispensation is God's way of dealing with a group of people during a particular time period. To properly understand a, a Bible passage, it's important to know both the time period and the group of people to which it applies. This way you can determine which dispensation applies to each biblical passage. So we all know that God had different rules for different groups of people in different time periods. Not only were there different rules, but the punishment for not keeping the rules were also different. An illustration of this we'll use uh, for an example capital punishment just for an example when Adam and Eve were in the garden there was no capital punishment for murder just yet as a matter of fact there wasn't any sin at all to be punished for and to add there wasn't any death Adam's fall hadn't happened just yet now a few years later Adam and Eve's son Cain killed his brother Abel but there wasn't any capital punishment for Cain. The dispensation at the time didn't allow it. God didn't institute it just yet. So God even put a mark on Cain so no one else could kill him. Okay, But after the flood, something changed. The dispensation changed. God instituted capital punishment for murder. And we see that from the previous example with Moses working on the Sabbath and being stoned to, to death for it. So two different dispensations or administrations. Now, under the dispensation of the law, Moses' law, capital punishment was administered for other things as well. Worshipping of idols, homosexual acts, consulting mediums, witchcraft are just a few. Okay, so we see God's dispensations being different during two periods of time, Adam and Eve's time, and then during the time of Moses. Two distinct programs God used to deal with mankind okay so we've seen two dispensations here but there are a total of seven dispensations throughout the entire Bible actually there is eight and we're gonna talk about that later the first dispensation is the dispensation of innocence and we're gonna take a look at the chart up here okay and if I do this right, I'm going to be able to pull out some fancy uh, drawing tools. And uh, let's see, we're going to use blue. And I'm going to choose this one. All right. So the first one is the dispensation of innocence. Okay. And we're talking about the time of Adam. Okay. Right here. This is where we're talking about Adam and Eve. That was Adam and Eve were sinless in the Garden of Eden in complete fellowship with their creator God. Once Adam ate from the, the forbidden tree, sin entered creation and thereby death. Okay, because man changed God's method, God started to deal with man in a different way. Now, the second dispensation is conscience. And this dispensation is from Adam to Noah, okay? So we're looking right in this area right about here, okay? Right about there. All right, so Adam to Noah in 4004 BC to uh, about 2350 BC, let's say, okay? Now, this began once Adam and Eve were banished from the Garden of Eden, and now man would live by his conscience that's why it's called the dispensation of conscience there were no written laws just yet the age of conscience ended with Noah's flood God's response to global wickedness now the third dispensation is called human government and it is from Noah to Abraham right around this area here so we have from Noah to Abraham and that was between 2350 BC to about uh, 2000 BC let's say okay now with Noah and his family leaving the ark after the flood a new dispensation the human government as we're talking about a government was established to ensure order but there soon became another problem with man okay man messes up again Noah's descendants did not scatter and repopulate the earth like God instructed them. 
Instead, they go out and they assemble the Tower of Babel to worship other gods in their, their pagan worship, okay? With God confounding their languages and dispersing them, then we have another change into the dispensation of promise. The dispensation of promise is from Abraham over to Moses. Now we have Moses up here. So we go from Abraham. Oh, all right. We'll go from uh, Abraham here all the way up to Moses, let's say, okay? And we're looking at the promise, which you see right here in this area. Okay. So uh, promise, Abraham to Moses. And we're looking at the time period of 2000 BC to about 1500 BC, okay? God took Abr Abram a pagan Syrian Gentile later named Abraham. The Lord promises him a son Isaac, then would uh, come Jacob, then the nation Israel. This is known as the Abrahamic Covenant. Israel was so rebellious that God allowed the Egyptians to enslave them for hundreds of years. Then God moves Israel out of Egypt by the leadership of Moses and we move on to a different dispensation. The fifth dispensation is law. Moses to Paul. So we have Moses here. And we go all the way over here to Stephen and Paul. Okay. And that dispensation is law. Now on Mount Sinai, God instructs Moses to give Israel the Mosaic law. And Israel was commanded to keep the law. The Jews failed again miserably, murdering their prophets of the Old Testament. They break God's laws more than they can keep them. They worship idols and the list is long. So the apex of Israel's unbelief was reached when the Jews rejected their Messiah Jesus and demanded his crucifixion. Instead of God bringing immediate wrath upon them after they stoned their prophet Stephen, we see Stephen right up here, after they stoned him, God took one little Jew named Saul and converted him to become Paul the Apostle, beginning our present dispensation, grace, okay, which is the sixth dispensation, grace, Paul to the present day, all right, so Paul is here, and this is the entire dispensation of grace, Paul's books written to us for today are Romans to Philemon. We see that down here. Okay, so this is our current dispensation, the dispensation of grace. God has set Israel aside temporarily. God then forms the body of Christ, the age of grace, now turning to and offering salvation to the Gentiles. Before this, God was only dealing with the Jews and had put the Gentiles to the side but now we see the opposite. God turns to the Gentiles instead, temporarily, okay? God sends Paul to the Gentiles with the revelation of the mystery, the secret hidden in God since before the creation of the world, the gospel of grace, created specifically to create the body of Christ, fellow heirs with his son, Jesus. The rapture will close our dispensation of grace and then the next dispensation will commence where God turns back to the nation of Israel to fulfill the promises he's made to them earlier on. Okay, so the seventh dispensation now is the kingdom dispensation. This is post rapture. We see the rapture here. So the seventh dispensation starts right about here. Okay, with the rapture. All right. And the books dealing with that are from Hebrews to Revelation. That's all about Daniel's 70th week, the Jews going into uh, Daniel's 70th week, the tribulation period, and on into the 1,000 year reign of Christ, okay? So Daniel's 70th week commences the seven years of wrath, Jacob's trouble, the great tribulation, the day of the Lord for the nation of Israel. And then the second coming of Christ comes, okay? At the end of the seven years, and then into the 1000 millennial reign and 1000 years of peace. So we've seen seven dispensations so far. Now, how, how, this is how God 
has been dealing with man and will also deal with man into the future. Now, a while ago I mentioned that there was an eighth dispensation and uh, eternity future, okay? This is after the 1,000 year millennium and it runs for eternity when God creates a new heaven and a new earth and we see that in Revelation chapter 21 and 22. We're talking about in this period here after the seven years after the 1000 years uh, on earth okay and then there's a new earth and a new heaven created so we're looking we're looking towards um, let me see if I can change this here all right we're looking towards the rest of this out into the future okay that's what we're with the eighth dispensation but we're going to concern ourselves specifically to the the seven dispensations because that concerns our past and our immediate future all right and we'll get into the specifics of that as we look at each dispensation a little closer in, in later on so understanding the dispensations and rightly dividing second timothy 2 15 are very important it's the foundation the backbone to understanding god's word and God holds us accountable for studying and understanding his word okay we will one day be judged at the judgment seat of Christ according to what we've done as members in the body of Christ so that concludes this study now if you take a look at this chart uh, I recommend you go through it and get familiar with your with this chart because we're going to be using it a lot in the, in the near future with the the rest of this study the seven dispensations but have no fear because by the time I'm done with this study, you're going to know this chart inside and out. And you're going to be able to explain it to another person, okay? That's the goal. of. That's my goal. I want to be able to teach and edify you, my fellow saints, so that you can then turn around and explain this chart, explain the seven dispensations, explain why it's so important to rightly divide and understanding dispensation is part of that rightly dividing okay and that's how you understand God's Word so anyway thanks for studying with me Saints and I will see you on the next video